What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today I am looking at a new feature coming to Dynamics in the 2019 Wave 2 in October. Uh, this is kind of a, a new feature, kind of a semi-announced feature. It was announced last month. Uh, and we're going to go through the idea of creating environments today. So, um, I'm currently in the Power Platform Admin Center. We can see this is in preview still. Uh, and we have a button up here that says New. Now, before I switched on um, the uh, 2019 Wave 2 update, I think when I clicked on New, it would just come up to say, this button doesn't do anything at the moment. Please create environments in the old Admin Center. But now this button is uh, is now active. It may or may not be regarding that uh, that setting, but this button is now active, and we can now do things with it. So if I click on new, we get a pop out on the right that says new environment, and we can give it a name such as uh, test org one, for instance. Uh, we have a type here. There are only two types: production or trial. This seems to be a bit of a step away from previous Microsoft terminology of production and sandbox. Uh, trials are kind of what you would uh, see if you spam up a, a trial through um, through Dynamics asking for a trial of Dynamics software. Um, we, there are also sort of support instances, which are also types um, that I've seen in the Dynamics Admin Center, but at the moment we have production or trial. Uh, we have region. So this is the really cool bit. So um, historically, wherever your Office 365 environment was located, uh, that is where your data center would be for all your data in Office 365, uh, including Dynamics. So if you had an Office 365 uh, environment or tenant in the UK, you would automatically get a UK data center for your Dynamics environment. But this feature now allows you to create an environment in a different data center from your default one. So um, the ones that are currently on offer are the United States, Europe, Asia, Japan, Canada, United Kingdom, South America, and France. And these are the only options that we have. So as you can see, this one says Europe default, um, which means that the uh, default one for this environment is Europe at the moment, but we can't select another one. Uh, we can also add a purpose into this uh, into this as well um, to say what the purpose of this environment is, whether this is a testing one, whether this is a UAT, whether it's for QA, etc. We also have this interesting one, which says create a database for this environment. So we may be thinking, well, why, why would we create a database? Well, why wouldn't we create a database? So what I'm actually doing here is creating an environment, a CDS environment, not necessarily a Dynamics 365 CE environment. Um, so what's the difference? The difference is the database and the apps. So at the moment, you can kind of see down here, this button says save. If I change create database from no to yes, that button now says next. So if I wasn't creating a database and if I was just creating a CDS environment where I could build my Microsoft flows, I could build my power apps, but I don't have a, a default common data model database at the back end of it, then I can go ahead and choose no and just create that environment. But if I want to have that CDS and that, C, uh, that CDS with the, with the common data model database uh, as you know, and potentially Dynamics 365 on top of that, I can choose to create a database here. Now, if I do choose to not create a database at this point, I can actually go through to the Power Apps Admin Center and there is an option to create a database in there. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you creating the database here. So we click Create and we have this Next button. Clicking Next, we get a few options that are related to Dynamics itself. So we're creating a database. Uh, we set the default language. So we have all these languages. Uh, we set a default currency. And this is the inter interesting bit about this whole bit. Enable the Dynamics 365 apps. So this is where we're actually enabling first party apps for that database. 
So if I'm not choosing this, if I'm, I'm creating that, that common data model uh, database in a default CDS environment um, and not applying Dynamics apps to it, that means that will always be a, a common data model um, database and we can't just use Dynamics on top of it. What we have here is this is saying, yes, I actually do want to create, uh, I do want to enable Dynamics 365 apps. And we also have this option here of automatically deploy these apps. Now we have the option for sales, customer service, field service, and project service automation. These are the current apps that you can get in Dynamics 365 CE. So you could have your sales, you can have your customer service, you can have your field service on here. Um, and if you choose these, you can add those on. Now, if I choose not to deploy these apps, um, I can actually deploy these as solutions later in the solution center for the old, uh, in the old Dynamics Admin Center. Um, but what this will do is this will enable this environment for D365CE. And that's probably what most people will want. Now, at the moment, you cannot convert a common data model environment to be a Dynamics 365 CE application environment with first party apps. Apparently this is on the roadmap, uh, but Microsoft uh, do not have this functionality at the moment. So when you are creating your environment, you need to be very careful with the idea of, do you, will this environment ever be a Dynamics 365 CE environment? Or will this only ever be a common data model environment and all the licensing that goes along with either one of these options. The last option we have down here is security group. So again, if you're used to the uh, Dynamics 365 admin center, uh, the, the classic admin center now, um, you could add on security groups. What this allows you to do is you can create an Office 365 community, uh, security group, add users to that, and then they will get access to your Dynamics environment. The reason you would use security groups is maybe you have a production environment and a UAT and a testing environment, and maybe only your devs are allowed into the, the testing environment or the QA are only allowed into the testing environment, and users are only allowed into the UAT environment or the production environment. You can specify a security group here, and you can choose to um, like restrict access to it. I'm trying to show you this. Uh, there's another in interesting point to note here. If I go back and if I choose a, my default region to be something else, to so say I want to um, change my default region to United Kingdom because I know the United Kingdom data centers uh, are closer to where I live, and that'll be a better experience for my users. Um, but it's not the default environment I'm currently in. If I go back to next, uh, we will see here that um, we have this warning to say, you cannot currently create a D365 environment in another region or another data center. Um, you can only do it for your default data center. Uh, I'm guessing this will be something that's coming in with time, but what this just will allow you to do is just um, uh, deploy a um, common data model database and a common data service environment instead. So that's something to be aware of as well. If you do need to um, create an environment in another data center, I believe you can log a ticket with Microsoft support and they can either create you a, an environment in another region or you can move an existing environment from one region to another through Microsoft support. Yeah, this is the new, uh, the new environment creation process. I think it looks great. What do you guys think? you know we're using this from now on uh, comments down below um, if you like this video please like uh, please share and subscribe to my uh, youtube channel Ciao for now